Alright guys, welcome back to another M Creator Lore video. So today what we're going to work on is the mechanics for the growth uh, for those crystals. And I wanted to enable the tick update for all the blocks so we can base it or... Yeah, I think it's all the blocks so... Or the ones that we need to actually run the script from. Uh, so at the moment I'm just doing the, the settings for the, um, the actual stone itself so it will start growing. Um, when there isn't any blocks there. Uh, we'll also create an item today so we can actually have some sort of purpose for this particular uh, resource as well. So uh, I want to actually test if there is fluid here and basically what we're going to be doing is uh, testing if there is a solid block of water above and if that's true, then what we want to do is we want to go ahead and uh, basically have it um, test if there is not a block that's uh, designed to be there already. So we're going to choose the default one. And then what we want to do is we want to also make a condition if it's not the base one as well. So in this case, it's the base one. This one should be... Both should be above the block directly, so we want it one or, I believe it's the and, and operation that we want, so it's not either of those, so that would make more sense. And then what we're going to do is we're going to paste in the, or basically replace the block with the fundamental one where it's just that one block there. So that will basically consist, I'm just reading it over basically at this point and just kind of seeing if everything checks out and it looks like it would. So the next thing that I wanted to do was go into the actual crystals and edit that block. So in this case, the block that we just uh, basically told to spawn, I wanted to go ahead and um, set that up. Now I had some uh, generation issues for some reason, I just had to recompile. Or regenerate the code and everything worked fine after that so um yeah so i basically got went ahead and just pasted the same thing in and then i could basically ad adapt it a little bit to work with what i needed so uh for basically what i was doing was i just wanted to make sure that the block above was not the um not there for the upper part and then i wanted to basically replace the two blocks so it was it would be that particular one that I wanted now I'm also testing for error above this block so again this block is already at the level where one block above so we already know that going above the block should be water as well uh, if that doesn't tr return true then it's not going to actually place any blocks and then I wanted to actually set up a condition for or a trigger for basically when the I think I, this one's for the other event so basically when we're breaking the block uh, to basically remove the other one now I wanted to basically make sure that the location is the same and that we're going to be dropping in the same location as where the item is on the uh, block that we just broke. So we're going to do that for basically two of the blocks, the upper and lower one. Uh, we're also going to set the destroy part for both the block breaking by player and explosion. So it happens either way. And then we're just going to import this and then update this, some of these variables. So they're subtracting the value and then we're going to make sure that they um, work for the upper part. So again making sure it's for both of those so we have all those procedures now and now it's time to basically go into paint.net and start working with kind of like a texture uh, for what our item will be for when it actually drops the item so I wanted to use the colors same as the um, the gem or the uh, the crystal itself so it would just make more sense to have like a shard type thing uh, and I just kind of wanted to quickly paint on some of the textures and stuff like that. Um, obviously, I sped this up because it's more satisfying watching it go in a uh, faster time. But uh, I just kind of slowly uh, worked with the shading and stuff like that until I got um, an item that was pretty good. I 
noticed a few different uh, parts where the pixels were a little bit off. And then I wanted to kind of darken around the edges a little bit. That was a little bit too dark, so I went back and um, went on a little bit lighter shade of that same color. So it looks a little bit better. And I was trying to play around with like uh, highlights and I'm like, okay, maybe I can go with something like that. And this was the hardest part because I wanted it to kind of reflect the, the shading that was already there, but it was this really hard shape to work with. So uh, if I wanted to spend more time on it, I would probably have taken more time to make sure that the, each pixel was um, placed in a position that would look really good for the lighting and stuff like that. But this is just a quick texture that I wanted to get out there. So that's basically the quickly the end result. So I just wanted to save that to the workspace and we're just going to save it with the same name as the uh, philosophate or whatever it's called. <laughs> Can't really pronounce it that well. Um, so we just I just went with that one set gem and then we could basically import that into amp creator. So let's go ahead into amp creator and then I'm just going to move that and we're dragging that onto there, set it as an item. I think that's our first item actually, so that's interesting. And then I wanted to make sure that the item could actually be generated. We don't actually have an items folder yet, so we're gonna have to create one of those. And once I did that, I just basically set up the, the name that I wanted to use for it for the registry, and then I could finally start tweaking some of the settings. I don't think I tweaked too many settings for the item. And then I just basically started adding it to the blocks for when it's dropped. Now, every block should drop at least one. So when there's a double block, it should drop two because the bottom block also breaks. So um, I just basically went through the settings, made sure that all these things were set up so the player could basically obtain this item. I will probably go and make a tool set or something later on, but I wanted to test in game just to see how everything was working. And I did notice that there was a couple issues. Um, some of them are quite apparent right now uh, with those blocks right over there. I think I just noticed that, but there's like this bubble around them. Now, generally there isn't an actual bubble around them if you place them in the water, but I noticed that, you know, some of these blocks were starting to do some weird things. And, um, yeah, I just wanted to actually see if the, the growth mechanics started working and then we can go back and fix some of these. I, th I did figure out the issue though. And, uh, that was because of something I did with the, uh, the growth mechanic and it was miscalculated, but, um, just wanted to kind of see, yeah, I, was, I kind of got distracted at this point. I'm like, Oh, look at this. There's a whole bunch of them popping up. And what was happening is they were all updating and replacing at the same time so but yeah i wanted to kind of see if their the growth would generate and yes it does it does slowly generate uh which is exactly what i want so we'll fix a couple things in the script right now as there's kind of a few things that needs to be fixed so the first one would be this block right here uh we needed to basically test um few conditions now I believe the block that was testing for the thing I was testing for a fluid not for a solid block so it took me a couple seconds to figure this part out but in the end what I realized was it was testing for the water around it and it wasn't going to work that way so I wanted to just make sure that you know the the tick and make sure that I was on the right procedure before I made any changes uh, for the tick update and I was just going over it. It took me a while to figure out, I think, but, um, it was just mainly this block. So I basically deleted that and then used just the regular block here to test for the block. And I just updated the coordinates and I was hoping that would work. Uh, the other thing that I did for fixing those water bubbles was just using the block state for water log. This one right eat right here and then I re removed that and just um, updated the the uh, what do you call it these parts right here so basically what this will do is it will make sure that it's waterlogged when it generates and then it will be um, a nice clean uh, generation rather than 
that. So we have to do that for the other generation files as well. I think there's like one more. So I ended up going into the base one, I think, or so I did end up into the right uh, procedure eventually. So I ended up grabbing those, updating those a little bit and just uh, replacing it with these uh, values here. So I could basically go ahead and do that. And once this was done, I could finally go ahead and save and test again. Um, I just wanted to make sure that everything was set up properly. Um, but yeah, everything, sh everything looks good. So I went into game and then I generated a brand new world so we could basically see um, how everything interacts and stuff like that just to make sure that everything's working. It takes a little while for the uh, cloud effect to kind of go away. So I was looking at it and they're not bubbling anymore. And if we break it, it does give us one of the items. Uh, that's because we broke one block, but the other block dropped. So uh, we could fix that theoretically, but um, it would it would require a little bit of script to do. So I'm just kind of waiting uh, for it to grow. And then I decided to set game roll, random tick speed, and then just 1000 just to kind of see if it grows. And it does, so that's good. Uh, we can set it back to like three. And that's the default value for tick rate. So I wanted to go around and just kind of see um, if there was any of the kind of weird things going on and it looks like I pretty much fixed the actual issue with the um what do you call it part where the uh blocks were updating underneath and stuff so I wanted to actually test the mechanics in survival mode uh this is always a good idea to do when you're actually working because a lot of, it's a lot easier to do it in creative but uh, a lot of the mechanics are going to be a lot different so in this case we got two crystals and I just wanted to make sure that this was the case for this one as well and and we got two crystals as well so that's perfect it works the way it should and I wanted to kind of just wait around for it to generate uh, for a block and then we'll go ahead and harvest that just to make sure that the uh, thing that we use. So there's a one block right there. We can kind of swim over to that and just mine it. It's a little bit hard to mine, but it's pretty good. But yep, it drops another good uh, crystal part. So I'm pretty happy with it. So if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.